Hello. Welcome back to the channel and this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video we're going to be continuing our countdown of our top 100 board games of all time. This is number 60 down to 51 but clearly we'll be almost halfway through by the end of this video. And then we'll be starting to get into the better games on this top 100. So if you haven't killed yourself already then congratulations and let's crack on with this list. Bollocks. So number 60 on this list is a abstract puzzle game called Quirkle. This one spilled as you back in 2011 or 2012, one M2. And in this game you'll have a bunch of tiles in front of you and you'll be trying to place the tiles out into the most lucrative point scoring places as possible. You will have different types of shapes and each shape will be of a different colour. And if you can get all the different shapes of one colour in a line or all different colours of all different shapes in one line, I think that's how it works confusing myself now then you will get a quirkle and you'll get loads of points you'll also score points for getting sets of colors and shapes in different lines and essentially when the bag of tiles runs out that'll signal the game the person with the most points will win whilst this is an abstract game it is really quite fun trying to figure out where the best place to put the tiles are and because the board so to speak starts off really small and gradually expands as the game progresses the amount of different combinations that are available to you becomes lost in this sea of shapes and colors right so it's quite fun thinking that there's no spaces to put your tiles that are going to score and then suddenly out of blue you spot one in the corner and hope that nobody else goes there right quirkle a well-deserved spill de jar winner and it's quite cheap so even if you don't like abstract puzzle games this one is really really good so number 59 on this list is a game that is probably the oldest game on this list. It's a dexterity game called Crokinol. This game takes place on a circular wooden board with a hole in the centre, or recess in the centre, I should say. And there'll be different quadrants on the board. You can play with up to four players, but it works best with two. And you'll be flicking a disc, trying to get it into the centre hole, right? If you score, you get 20 points. If you miss, your disc stays on the board. But in your next go, you will have to hit one of your discs that's already on the board before the disc you just shot comes to rest, right? If it doesn't, you have to pull it off the board. Once you've used up all your discs, you'll get different points depending on where your discs are on the board. And if you get over 100 points after a certain amount of games, I think that's the rules, then you'll win the game of Crokinole, right? This is a wildly popular game. I think it's dropped down on our list quite a bit because there's another game that's sort of similar, that's sort of overtaken us and made this not redundant, but we just prefer playing the other game, right? So, yeah, Crokinole is a worldwide renowned classic. And whilst it's quite expensive, you can get cheap sets, but they're not really that good. It's not worth wasting your money on the old shitty plastic sets that you get from Amazon.de. A world renowned game that is about 200 years old and it's never, it's, I don't think it's ever going to go away, is it? So, number 58 on this list is a game by the venerable, not vulnerable, Reiner. Kinizio. It's the race to El Dorado. In this game, you will be playing cards that will allow you to move across different types of terrain. You might be playing one machete, two machete, three machete to move across jungle spaces. You can play treasure cards that will allow you to buy cards from a market that will embolden your deck and allow you to move through spaces more efficiently, right? This is essentially a deck building slash racing game. It's on this list for the very reason that I've never ever lost a game of this. I might sound conceited, but I've never lost a game of this. That's why it's in the top 100. But even if I had lost this game, it's still a fantastic game. There's two expansions like Hexes and Heroes and some Golden Temple thing, which whilst they add quite a bit to the game, you don't really need to go and get them. This game plays in about half an hour, 40 minutes, and it's a modular board setup. So most of the games won't be the same so yeah we really do like the race to El Dorado and it's highly recommended by us right number 57 is a miniatures game by Call Mini or Not or Simon as they like to be called these days it's Rum and Bones this is essentially a two-player skirmish game you will have control of a series of captains and you'll have the crew which is this big mass of miniatures that will just be moving forward and trying to take out anything that comes in their path right one of the things we really like about this game is the amount of variety it's got what seems like hundreds and hundreds of different captains that you can choose from there's loads of different sets there's even a viking set called the Hammers of Ragnarok which 
we don't have it's the only thing that we don't have for this game we can't track it down anywhere but yeah realm of bones yeah it's just dumb stupid fun it's just going to be a dice chucking luck fest but it doesn't matter because it's one of the games that you can sort of forgive the lack of luck mitigation because there's just so much stuff to do so many different variables so many different combinations of characters and different ships that you can use and thankfully i don't think we're ever going to see any more rum and bone stuff fingers crossed because i really don't want to spend any more money on it right so yeah one of the best pirate games out there yeah we do like it a lot and uh yes rum and bones Number 56 is a game that was out of print for years and years and years and some stupid twats decided to pay stupid money for it and just when they bought it, it came out back in print and it was going for about 20 quid. We already had it, we weren't one of those numb nuts that went out and spent 100 quid on this but it's Pillars of the Earth. It's just a basic worker placement game. You'll be placing people out on the board and then you'll go around the board in a sequence and resolve the action spaces where you've come from. It's got a novel mechanic about turn order where you'll be pulling tokens out of a bag and then you've got different types of craftsmen that are going to be doing different stuff right this game came with like a little jigsaw puzzle cathedral which people slag off for being pointless but it's basically acts as a timer right i ain't got a problem with that i've yet to meet anybody that has actually read the fucking book right i've never read the book i've got no plans on reading the book pillars of the earth but i do like the game so yeah stuff the book that can just sit on the shelf but pillars of the earth comes out quite a bit and we do like it a lot so number number 55 on this list is star wars x-wing the miniatures game right this is the first edition right we're not talking about the second edition we don't generally buy games that we already own so when we heard that the second edition was being released and the first edition was practically redundant unless you want to spend money on upgrade kits we were a bit miffed about that but yeah star wars x-wing sees you take a load of miniatures out onto a bare table and you'll be using these sort of movement markers to move forward and then you'll be using dice to engage in combat it's a scenario based you might have to just blast your opponents out of space right or you might be trying to convey different things to different places on the table right this game probably got a little bit too bloated there was a load of ships and stuff that nobody had ever heard of there was the sort of moss eisley type characters that were at their own sort of blue sets and all that we didn't bother with any of that but we have got enough of this to last us a lifetime it's just a bit annoying that fantasy fighters try to you know milk the cash cow again and again and again and try and get you to part with more money and buy stuff that you already own so that's a big no-no it's one of the reasons why this game is not higher on the list right but anyway star wars x-wing as a standalone skirmish game on your tabletop it's got a wonderful theme and yeah if you can pick up the core set cheap it's not a lot in it but if you can pick up a core set or two on the cheap then it's well worth a look so number 54 on this list is a dexterity game that's right here it's catacombs third edition this is a one versus all game where one player will be taking control of like an overall character and everyone else will be selecting a different type of hero you might have wizards barbarians dwarves elves all that stuff and other bits and pieces and these characters will be represented as discs right and you'll be flicking them around this little arena with holes in you'll be filling the holes in as sort of obstacles you'll put a border around the arena and you'll be trying to flick these discs to move around and each character may have some weapons that will have little discs that you can flick if you hit the opponent then you'll will do damage and then you'll work your way through the levels of the dungeon and you'll come across a big bad boss and if you defeat that then you'll be the winner of catacombs it's a very novel game it's just flicking discs right but the way that the designer has added layer and layer theme onto this is nothing more than astonishing it looks absolutely fantastic the artwork in the third edition is fantastic there's loads of expansions for this there's the wyverns expansion the caverns of soloth expansion it's just a huge game and you could even combine it with catacombs and castles and have that loaded in as well right so there's an infinite number of possibilities with this and if you like dexterity games this is one way of sort of trying to merge an rpg type thing with a dexterity game and it works really really well nice one so the next game on this list is a game called tales of the arabian nights this is a reprint of the original 80s version made by avalon hill i think it was this is a random style game you're gonna have a big book a book of tales right which acts like a sort of a fighting fantasy game book choose road adventure thing you'll be moving around the board stopping on locations and you'll be taking an encounter card that will have numbers on it and then that will tell you to turn to a certain space in the book you'll choose a reaction to the encounter and then that will tell you how the encounter goes right this is a crazy game you can go mad in this you can have a sex change in this you can get pissed out your nut you can get thrown in prison you can be chased around the map by an unrequited lover it's a crazy game there are rules for points so you can win it but these get thrown out the window it's just a case of running around the world going completely and utterly apeshit 
and we love it. We love the sense of chaos. We love the sense of randomness in this. It's one of the very few games that lives and breathes off of its random nature. And for that reason, Tales of the Arabian Nights is one of our favorite storytelling games. It's just a real shame that they haven't tried to create an expansion for this because it really does deserve more content. Number 52 on the list is another dexterity game. Fucking hell, there's loads of dexterity games on this top 100, but that's because we love dexterity games, and you should know that, right? It's Blocky Mountains. This is a game which comes with uh, an, an explorer token with a little hook on the top, a bear and some provisions, and you'll be using these hooks to lift, push, pull, whatever you want to do. These characters across Blocky Mountains out of mountains made of blocks right there's about a billion and one scenarios in the core box there's loads of expansions there's the rock slide expansion and you've also got a, another scenario book that introduces even more challenging scenarios so yeah blocky mountains is it's a really underrated game yeah i don't know why this isn't more popular it is still available you can still get it on amazon in germany so if you're interested in a really thematic beautiful looking dexterity game blocky mountains you can't really go wrong with it you know Number 51 is a rather bizarre card game by Bruno Feduti. I think that's how you pronounce his name. But it's a game called Masquerade. In Masquerade, everyone will be given a role of a courtly personality which has a special ability associated with it. On your turn, you'll be asked to take a card off somebody, put it with your card under the table, and then you will either swap the cards around or you won't swap the cards around, you'll swap or not and you'll give the player a card back face down right they won't know what that is on their turn they can either take a card off somebody else swap or not or they can look at their card and activate the special ability right whoever gets a certain amount of money i think it's 10 gold or something like that anyway they will win the game this game is absolutely crazy because there's loads of stuff about accusing people of swapping stuff you can try and bluff your way around a table take a punt on whether or not you think you've got the character that you need right there's an expansion for this which adds even more characters allows you to play with more, even more players and lo and behold they have just released a second edition of masquerade it's a dirt cheap game so it goes for about 12 quid it's a wonderful wonderful party game there's so many laughs everyone shouting at each other accusing each other of being a complete and utter asshole and uh more often than not we are but yeah masquerade a cheap as chips card game the sort of thing that you'd expect from mr for duty and yeah it doesn't disappoint so you go that's the next installment of our top 100 ball games of all time come back for the beginning of the top 50 if you aren't bored out of your tree already if you haven't subscribed to this channel do us a favor and do that hit the like button comment and all that crap and we'll see you when we start the top 50.